Hi, so in this video I'm going to show you how to use the REST APIs of the SSI kit. So before going into the details of the API itself, I want to point out the, the concepts the, the APIs are built on. So if you go to the docs at docs at dot world dot ID, the SSI kit and then the concepts to the architecture, you'll find this, this drawing that, that sketches what the APIs are doing. Actually, it draws the picture what the whole SSI kit is doing. So the SSI kit is a, a service, you can run it as a, a RESTful web service, or you could pull it in into directly as a Java dependency if uh, on, a, on, a, uh, on a on a mobile phone with Android or in a, in a backend component and then yeah utilize these functionalities of these blue boxes here um, and there are also SDKs that you can use to to talk to to the core APIs and, and, and to the other APIs. And then if you, for instance, want to implement an issue application or a hold application or a verify application, you just could, would, could use this dependency and yeah, connect to the SSI kit. And on the other side, the SSI kit makes remote calls to external SSI components such as a remote key store or the EPC blockchain to the EPC backend services as well. There are also other services involved in this European ecosystem. Also to these trust registries and probably also to an identity hub where data is stored. So these are uh, the outgoing calls. And everything can be demonstrated with this command line tool, which I showed in another video. But in this one, we will focus on the APIs. And if you look now at the core uh, components, there are actually the core SSI services. They are pretty low level APIs that expose functionalities if you want to manage keys or dits or credentials. And above those services, there are ecosystems because um, the core systems services, they're pretty generic that are used in any SSI ecosystem. But if you want to connect to a certain ecosystem, you've got very specific functionalities and this is what we've bundled in this ecosystem abstraction layer. And currently there's only the ASIF one connected. And for that, we've got this ASIF API. So the ASIF specific functions bundled in this API. Further on, we've got high-level interfaces for an issue application. It's called a signatory. Then for managing credentials for uh, for a holder applications, but also for uh, issue portal, it's the custodian. And then we've got a verifier component that's called the auditor. And all of those are having RESTful APIs. So you could access those services by either if you use the SSI kit as a CLI tool. I recommend watching the video to install it and to use it. But for now, I just point, um, I'm just running this SSI kit serve command. And this will simply launch um, the APIs on your local host and if you just, for instance, if I just switch to this ASIF API, I've got um, the API root that you see here. And then we have got the documentation Swagger or Redox. Here you see the API and then you can play with your local installation, right? So if you don't have the SSI kit running, we are also providing a deployed version of it and you can feel free to access those links and, and play with them. Yeah, it's a, a test system that we set up constantly. So you don't expect the things that they 
remain persistent but if you want to just have a proof of concept and play a little with the API feel free to access those APIs so there is the the core API at core.ssikit.worldid there is the signatory at signatory.ssikit.worldid and the custodian as, as well as the auditor yeah you, you find the documentation here uh, the swagger docs yeah and now i guess we can look into some some common use cases as said already the core api exposes those the pretty low level operations just the CRUD operations for keys, dits, and VCs, as you see here. For instance, if you want to generate a key, just specify the algorithm, you run it, and then you, you get a key ID. Yeah, And by, by using this at the dit service, you could you could create here a did key. Obviously, there are also parameters for did web, that they, for did key, they are not used. But by, by running this, I just created this identifier, this, this did key. Please be aware that for did key only, um, the key type, the key algorithm ED25519 is supported, yeah, because other key types are not working for did keys. So um, I could load this did I just created. Or the mm -hmm. I just see there are two para fields in Swagger. This needs to probably be fixed. Mm -hmm. Sadly, this, the, the load is currently not working. So this is, if you find something like this, please open uh, a GitHub issue. Um, you can resolve this. Here you can import them. I hop over to the signatory. Let's issue a credential because these these are the more most interesting use cases. Here is an example request. For instance, if you want to very issue a verifiable ID, just take this template ID here. ID. And here there are a lot of config options. Um, please be aware that they are that they are most of them are optional, a part of the issue did and the subject did. I just create now a self-signed certificate with this did key. I can provide also additional data if I want to. I just put it here. For instance, if I want to substitute something in the credential subject, I just uh, paste in my, my values like this. I run it and now I've got a verifiable ID with, with Phil as, as a first name because this is the only um, data field I changed. The others are used from the template that we maintain in the in the VC lib, yeah. And here is also the proof. At the end. So, in order to verify this, I would switch over to the to the auditor. Here we've got 
an input field that, that takes a verifiable credential or a verifiable presentation. I run it and it tells me that the signature policy was, was run and the signature is valid. So the verification process is working in a way that you can apply different verification policies. Yeah. I just mentioned the signature policy. But there are also other policies. You, you, you find them if you just run this command that lists the policies that can be used. For instance, I've got also here the JSON schema policy that verifies if the schema is correct. And I can paste here uh, a list of policies I want to verify. So I paste not these two policies, I run them and you see here in the results, the signature as well as the JSON schema are valid of this credential. Yeah. If you want to create a verifiable presentation that's actually used, if a holder presents a credential to a verifier, you would need to, ver to visit the custodian API because this is part of the wallet backend. And here is the presentation API. Here you paste in the, the verifiable present credential and you would need the holder did. That's actually the same did this credential was issued to. So I'll just fetch the did key out of the credential subject. Of course, there might be other dits. That's why we have this field here. I run it. And here I realized that maybe I need to paste in a string in this list. second okay now I pasted in the credential as uh, a string so all the hyphens are, are escaped and then uh, yeah the presentation can be generated as you can see here So it's actually the, the credential wrapped in a presentation and then signed by the holder's did key yeah, that you can see here. This is what would, would be forwarded to a verify application. Actually, we can do that. We can simulate that. We copy the presentation now to the auditor where we verified the credential earlier. Now I paste in the whole credential, that the, the, including the, the presentation. And here I see the signature could not be verified. Actually, that makes a lot of sense because I, I have just used another credential yeah, that I, I escaped. <laughs> so it does make sense, the verification process. Okay, um, if you want to run a, a web service for, for, for yourself and extend the code base as you wish, I would recommend to, to look into the example project uh, on GitHub. If you go to our GitHub account, you find the uh, SSI kit examples. And here, if you go down to the projects in the Kotlin folder, there is the custom data rest example. And this actually shows you in a very few simple lines of code, how to register a custom credential in 
a custom credential template, including a data provider. That's how you can connect to your own database and fetch your own data for this credential. And also it shows you how to register custom policy for verifying the, the credential. And then how you would just um, start the web service at, at a port of your, your wish. And here we are running the, the signatory and the auditor. Yeah. And they would pull in your custom credentials, your custom verification steps and, and also your, your custom data provider. So just a few lines of code, but here you see it, how you could run your own service. Okay, so that's it for, for the time being. And yeah, in case of further questions, just reach out to us. We are happy to help. Okay.